Welcome. Welcome and grace and peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship with Kern Memorial United Methodist Church in Oak Ridge. And we, have, we are delighted that you have joined us for this time of praise and worship. I have a save the date announcement that I want to uh, remind you of the previous announcement that Sunday, June 5th, is Pentecost Sunday, the remembrance and celebration of God's gift of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost considered to be the birth of the church. And we at Kern Memorial Church join in the celebration, and we are having a Pentecost Sunday church celebration at the 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock services with, with fellowship and activities uh, in, in between. And we believe this is a day to be together, if, if at all possible. If we feel so led, a day to be together on Sunday, June 5th. Please save this date. Thank you for joining us in worship. Our call to worship. We gather to worship God the Father, for we believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We gather to worship God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, for we believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. We gather to worship God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ, through the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. For we believe in the Holy Spirit. See 
of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me a long, long, narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to Memorial Church uh, joins other churches in the Oak Ridge, greater Oak Ridge community at this time of year in recognizing and honoring our graduates, those graduating from high school or colleges or universities or particular uh, training programs. We recognize you and honor you and your families. And we offer this prayer, this prayer for graduates. Maybe pray. Gracious God, we thank you and praise you for who you are and what you are doing in our lives and in the world. We thank you for life celebrations, for high moments in the lives of those so special to us that bring special joy. And now we thank you for our graduates, from high school, from colleges and university, from other places of training and learning. We recognize and thank you for those nurturing them to this point in their lives. The parents and all family, the church, teachers, coaches, scout leaders, neighbors, and so many others. Thank you, O oh God, for their God-given abilities and interest, for their hearts and souls. Lord, we especially pray your divine blessing upon all graduates at this crossroads of life, at this moment of achievement and commencement, of endings and new beginnings. Bless them, keep them in your grace as they continue forward in the wonder of life. Lead them in your way, your way which is the way, Continue to reveal to them your claim and call upon their lives. Remind them always of your word through Jeremiah, that I know the plans I have for you, plans for your shalom, 
your richest well-being. I'm giving you a future with hope. Most of all, remind them of your love for them and your promise always, always to be with them. This we pray joyfully in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Giving is at the heart of worship. Generosity is a vital part in following Jesus and loving our neighbor as we will love ourselves. And so we invite you, we encourage you to give. We thank you for giving. You may give online through kernchurch.org. You may mail your gifts to the church or bring them by the church. And we... Uh, certainly receive uh, IRAs and other contributions. We give. We give in the name of Jesus Christ, as, see, as Christ has so given to us. Gracious God, this we give. We give to you. Out of what you have given us, out of how you bless us so richly, we give. We give with the faith, the hope, the love that this and every offering shall be earthen vessels, means of grace, a mission of ministry, of making disciples of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. I love to tell the story of unseen things of of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longing as nothing else can do. to 
two scriptures for today. Pastor Jim has asked that I read both from the New Revised Standard Version for those who keep up with such things. The first is from the 24th chapter of Luke's Gospel, verses 44 through 49. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say thanks be to God. Jesus, Jesus Christ, the risen, resurrected Jesus. The risen Christ has been given 40 days, 40 additional earthly days between Easter Sunday and his ascension. And we are spending the month of May you know, looking at those passages that in each of the Gospels, and the first chapter of Acts. And Jesus' words and Jesus' deeds, as diverse as they are, they seem to coalesce around what we call the Great Commission. And last week we read and heard from Matthew 28 and Mark 16 that the key word was disciple. That's who they were, disciple. Disciples were called to disciple. Disciples, disciple. This day, this week, 
The word is witness. You are witnesses of these things. You shall be my witnesses. We heard and read the end of the 24th chapter of Luke. This chapter is in the aftermath of the uh, Emmaus story that we heard a few weeks ago. And, and the two who have encountered the risen Christ uh, back in Emmaus indeed went to Jerusalem. They indeed uh, told what they had seen and heard. And the 11 remaining disciples we heard a few weeks ago and uh, recover that this, today believed. They came to believe that Jesus indeed was risen and had appeared. And so now they are, uh, they continue to be in, in Jerusalem, that same group, when a stranger appears, we know and we are told the stranger is Jesus, is once again the ri risen Jesus, and the group is, is startled, as we heard read, they, they think they may be seeing a, a ghost or a phantom, and Jesus says, look, you know, look at my hands, look, look at my feet. It is me, me in my physical body is, is right here with you. And we believe in the resurrection of, of the body. And Jesus even goes on to eat broiled fish with them. But then Jesus continues... And Jesus, once again, as he had done before, is speaking of the scriptures, relating the scriptures to him. He speaks of the law and the prophets and the Psalms. He reminds them that it was necessary for him, the Messiah, to be crucified and then to be raised. And Jesus then says, you are witnesses of these things. You, right here, right now, have witnessed the earthly truth, the reality of me, crucified and now risen. You are witnesses of these things. That is who they were in addition to disciples. They, they were witness. Their identity is that they are witness, witnesses. And the word witness is used very much the same way that we use the word witness. Witness is aligned with experience. The witness is it's not taken in with with hearsay or you know, in indirect words. But the witness is the one who has experienced someone or who has experienced something. They had experienced Jesus Christ. Have we ever been blessed with such experiences. Almost indescribable ex experience of, of a presence, of, of the presence of the living God, of the living Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Have we ever had this experiences or of, of grace and forgiveness, and mercy. Can we sing, he lives, he lives. I know he lives, he, he lives within my heart. You are witnesses of these things, Jesus says. Then in the book of Acts, we go ahead to the, the very end of Jesus' 40 days, just right before he is taken up into heaven in the ascension. And Jesus says, 
You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. And we take this to mean more than a, a prediction, but that Jesus is using the future tense as an imperative, as a call. And elsewhere in, in the book of Acts, the uh, witness becomes a verb. And that they were called to witness to what they had witnessed. So just as disciples disciple, the witnesses were called to witness. To, to not keep experience to themselves, but to, to share, to proclaim by word, by deed, by life, by love of their experience of Jesus. Disciples disciple and the witnesses witness. It may be hard for us as United Methodists to, to get our heads and hearts uh, around this. Uh, you know, hopefully not, but perhaps so, and, and that's okay. So I want to lift up two persons from our Christian memory, from our faith family, two persons as seemingly as far different as uh, East is from the West. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, and the singer Chris Christopherson. John Wesley, as Anglican, as Church of England, as he could possibly be. His, uh, his father and grandfather being an Anglican priest, an Anglican priest on, uh, on his mother's side of, of the family. Uh, he himself being called to ministry, being uh, well-educated at Oxford, and being ordained and brought into ministry. Uh, and Wesley, uh, you know, coming to uh, the colonies in 1737, coming to uh, Savannah and uh, the area around Savannah and St. Simon's Island, uh, coming uh, as a missionary and hearing from his own words and knowing that his year plus here was an absolute disaster. It was a failure in every possible means, his, his inability to, to relate to, to the people here, just all sorts of difficulties. So uh, the next year, in 1738, Wesley sailed back to England. In return, you undoubtedly remember the story of the incredible storm at sea, seemingly of biblical proportions, of most everyone, especially Wesley, uh, being afraid, but mostly afraid for his soul. On board the ship, there was a group of Moravians. They were calm, they were serene. They were singing hymns when they returned safely to England, John Wesley wanted to know what they had within them that, that he lacked. And he was told of, it was spiritual assurance. Assurance that they were saved. Assurance that, that they were loved by, by God in Christ and, and that they had accepted Christ's love in, into their hearts. So to John Wesley's credit, he tried to attend their meetings and their services and, and talk with their leaders and, uh, and others. And he kept on struggling, seeking to find spiritual assurance. But then, on May 24th, 1738, John Wesley writing in his own words, 
In the evening, I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street where one was reading Luther's preface to the epistle to the Romans. About a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation, and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. John Wesley experienced Jesus. John Wesley, who knew all about Jesus, who studied Jesus, who was ordained in the name of Jesus, who had been preaching Jesus, John Wesley experienced firsthand, up close and personal, grace, forgiveness, mercy, salvation. John Wesley indeed was a witness who experienced the living Christ. But he goes on in the very next sentence to say, I then testified openly to all there what I now first felt in my heart. And Wesley could not keep his personal experience to himself, so immediately, openly, Wesley witnessed. And thank God that Wesley was given over a half century of additional years. And John Wesley devoted all of those years seeking to live and, and to share Christ's saving love. A couple of hundred thousand of miles on horseback, calling together and, and training and empowering you know, other leaders, sending them forth, sending Francis uh, Asbury to, and others to the American colonies. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, was a disciple who discipled. He was a witness who witnessed. You might know better the, the life story of Chris Christopherson, most recently uh, detailed thoroughly in that uh, multi-evening series, uh, Country Music, that was shown on PBS. Uh, Chris Christopherson was uh, born to privilege. His father was uh, an Air Force general. His, his mother was a social uh, activist. Uh, he was a brilliant young man. He went to the ex uh, exclusive Pomono College in, uh, in, in California. And he studied uh, writing and, and literature. He was Phi Beta Kappa. Chris Christopherson then became a Rhodes Scholar and earned his master's in, in Oxford in, uh, in English uh, literature, the Romantic poets especially. Uh, he studied William Blake, and among the things that William Blake uh, wrote was, if a person does not do what they're supposed to do, they are going to be miserable. And upon Returning to the United States, Chris Christopherson um, joined the, the Army. Uh, he became the, the captain of a uh, U.S. Army Airborne Ranger Division. Uh, he volunteered for Vietnam, but instead he was assigned to, to West Point to teach English literature. And he says in his own words that that he discovered he had to have lesson plans and lesson plans that had to be reviewed and approved by uh, uh, West Point superiors. And he couldn't think of anything more miserable than that. 
So he, he resigned his, his commission and he came to Nashville with a friend. And he wanted to write music, specifically country music. He wanted to make country music respectable. His parents were, were horrified. His mother wrote him, said, don't bother to write or, or to come home. You are a total embarrassment to us. Someone on Music Row that Chris Christopherson ran into had received a, a similar um, letter from his parents. And, and he said to Chris, it's, it's nice to get a letter from home, isn't it? But anyway, he, you know, from the ground up, uh, he began his career. He began working as, as a janitor in recording studios. Um, and working there, he, he would sit, sit in on recording uh, sessions with Johnny Cash and Waylon Jennings and, uh, and some others. Uh, he, he began to, um, to write some songs. And, uh, and several musicians said, wow, you are a writer. He, he wrote uh, me and Bobby McGee. He, he wrote, uh, help me um, make it through the night. He became one of the most prolific and popular uh, country songwriters and crossover songwriters. But his personal life was you know, pretty much a, a mess. He was friends with Larry Gatlin. And Larry Gatlin was very open with Chris Christopherson about his own demons with alcohol and drugs, but, but he said, I've got my faith. I've never given up Jesus, and I'm, I'm still going to church, and they even let me sing uh, at church. And Larry Gatlin tried to get Chris Christopherson to, to attend his church. There's a Pentecostal church outside of Nashville, the Evan Evangel Temple, that was uh, pastored by uh, Reverend Jimmy Roger Snow. It was named after the early country musician, and uh, he was the son of the country singer Hank Snow. But Chris Christopherson came in uh, with a tour. He was singing with uh, Connie Smith, and she was resolved to, to get Chris Christopherson in church. And so one Sunday, he, he relented, and he attended that, that Pentecostal church outside of, of Nashville. He had never experienced anything like that with the, uh, the, the music, the, the Pentecostal movements, that very uh, flamboyant preacher. Then he said at the, at the end of the message, he said the, the pastor gave an invitation. It sounded like Mordecai Ham preaching to Billy Graham. But the preacher said that, that we are all sinners and we fall short before God and that we need Jesus and there is forgiveness. There is love. There is salvation and mercy in Jesus. And he gave this flamboyant, emotional invitation. And Chris Christopherson writes in his own words, I'm kneeling there, and I carry a big load of guilt. And I was just out of control, crying. It, it was a release. It really shook me up. It was just a personal thing I was going through at the time. I had some kind of experience I can't even explain. The next day, Chris Christopherson became a witness who experienced Jesus. The very next day, Chris Christopherson wrote a song, Why Me, Lord? What have I ever done to deserve all the kindness you've shown? 
Why Me, Lord, became the bestseller of the many, many Chris Christopherson songs. Why Me, Lord, became the only number one uh, song that he had as a vocalist. A song that has been sung by so many, many, including our own Chris DeCue, right here, right now. Why me, Lord? What have I ever done to deserve even one of the pleasures I've known? Tell me, Lord, what did I ever do that was worth loving you or the kindness? One afternoon in August 1998, I found myself standing at the grave of John Wesley. I was with a study group in England. We had daily devotions, and I looked ahead on the schedule, and I volunteered to give our group devotional that day at the grave of John Wesley. I volunteered because of, of a story about that very spot. The story is told uh, well over a hundred years after John Wesley's death in 1791. The, the sexton there at his final church, uh, Wesley Chapel, uh, church in, in London, England. You'll ask uh, someone if, if, he, if he could pray at, at the grave. He said, certainly, certainly. And the individual watched. And the sexton was black, went, went out and knelt at Wesley's grave and put 
his left hand on the, the tombstone, and his right hand stretched heavenward. He said, Lord, do it again. Do it again. And we, the people called Methodist, are called to do it again. Called by Jesus Christ to do it again. Disciples, followers, learners, who disciple? Witnesses who by the grace of God in Christ have experienced firsthand love, mercy, grace, redemption in Christ and are called and we cannot and will not keep that to ourselves. Be witnesses who witness. And so from the you know, black gospel church tradition, what often as the preacher would preach, that the, the preacher would call out, or someone would call out, do I have a witness? Do I have a witness? Do, do, do I have a witness? May we be among them. More than ever, may we be among them. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, is it true that if that we are not who we are supposed to be, if, if we are not doing what we are supposed to do, that we shall be miserable people perhaps living miserable lives. And we remember Jesus has said that his very food was to do the will of the Father and to fulfill his work. And gracious God, we pray that hearing the scripture, the faith, family, memory, of the disciples, others through the years, and including just those two individuals, John Wesley and Chris Christopherson, that you would grant us a moment of recognition that we truly have experienced you. And by the, your grace shall and experience you. And perhaps are experience you. And that we cannot keep our risen Christ experience to ourselves. But by word, by deed, by life, especially by love. We shall be witnesses who witness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us this time of worship with Kerr Memorial United Methodist Church in Oak Ridge. May God bless you and, and keep you. May God shower you and make your heart strangely warmed again. In the name, love, and mercy of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. It all comes down to this. Would you require of me, of my neighbor as myself? And you above 
all things act justly love mercy walk humbly with you god in all things in all ways walk humbly with you god it all comes down to this to be your hands and feet good news to all the world the truth will set us free act justly love mercy walk humbly with you god in all things in all ways walk humbly with you god it's beauty for ashes it's morning to dancing it's closer and closer the kingdom of heaven it's beauty for ashes it's morning to dancing it's closer Closer, the kingdom of heaven. And years from now, we'll see the fruit our hands have sown. Faith just like a seed, the only way. love mercy walk humbly with you god in all things in all ways walk humbly with you god walk humbly with you god